Hi everybody. I hope everybody's doing good. I hope you guys are liking these videos. I hope they're not too boring. I thought I'd give you a break from the same people reading to you. But some of you guys have listened to me read all year. So something different anyway. So let's keep reading Mick Morris. Today we'll definitely get through two chapters. Chapter six is only like a page long. So let's start. The board of directors. Oh, that's right. This part is not from Mick's point of view. This is from somebody else's. Hmm. The board of directors quietly sat at the front of an enormous conference room. We have no answers. Every single camera has been consistently checked on on an hourly basis, said Tom Masterson, the head security guard of the museum. While people shook their heads and examined the reports, they continued to study the complex layout of the museum. Miss Morgan, not like the teacher across the hall. The director of the museum continued to ask questions as the entire staff, from curators and historians to conservation, administration, public relations, art, exhibit design, security, and catering, had all been called in for the early morning meeting. All staff was required to be in attendance. Does anyone have any ideas, she said. The museum had the unsurpassed reputation of being one of the finest museums in the world. Everything from the exhibits down to the last detail of the museum was always immaculate and in tip-top working order. The entire staff prided themselves on that, but this time they were puzzled. Something strange was happening at the museum, and they were at their wit's end trying to figure it out. No matter how hard they tried to find out what was going on or to capture the culprit, they couldn't. First, the weird things going on started out small. Minor things would be moved out of place, video cameras would stop working for no apparent reason, and when they would stop, you could see a shiny black flash across the screen and the sound would go out. They already had staff and security putting in extra hours to try and figure out the problem, but it seemed like it was no use. Something was wreaking havoc in the museum, something that was almost inhuman and lightning quick. It seemed to be spreading and slowly taking apart some of the most treasured pieces. As the curators continued to repair them on a daily basis, it seemed like whatever it was, was taking over the museum. It could only be one of the most evil forces known to man, mechanics, and machine. Hmm. Now we jump back to Mick's point of view for chapter seven. The next day, we got an early start. Since Mom, Aunt Marissa, and Sissy decided they would go check out the mall, we would meet them up later in the day. Sounds good to me, said Mom, as Sissy pushed her way past us into my parents' room. Nathan and I grabbed our backpacks and left the room while ignoring Sissy. Man, and to think I kind of liked her, said Nathan. What? No way, dude. You've got to be kidding, I said. Well, just a little crush. You have to admit, she's different when she isn't around our parents. Yeah, she's different, all right. Uh, if that's what you want to call it, I laughed. Hey, dude, you're supposed to be my friend, Nathan snapped. I am your friend, I said, surprised at Nathan's anger. We've never made fun of any of the... I've never made fun of any of the girls you told me about, Nathan grumbled. Nathan, take it easy, dude. Forget it. Just because you, she's your cousin or cuz to you when she's coming to the rescue, Nathan continued. Dude, I, I'm, I tried to talk to him. Don't talk to me, okay? Nathan barked as the elevator doors opened. Dad, Uncle Hayden, and Mr. Suarez now caught up to us. I guess they could feel the tension. Everything okay here? Asked Dad as he looked at us both. Yeah, fine, I said as Nathan stared straight ahead. Everything okay? asked Mr. Suarez. No, Nathan snapped. I knew enough to know that Nathan's dad asked him something about being tired, but I'd never seen Nathan act like this. He must have been really mad. But now it ticked me off. Sissy was my cousin, so he could pow all he wanted. I didn't care. We rolled the glass elevators down to the lobby where we met Brett, James, and some of the other crew members, except for Lenny. He had flown out to another job, and Dennis stayed behind at the last location to visit some family. We jumped into the Mythmobile, and within five minutes, we were entering the beautiful museum grounds. We pulled in through the curved iron gate and drove past the perfectly manicured grounds. 
So there's the picture of what the museum looks like when you drive through it. There's the clock tower and the trees, all that good stuff. As we turned into the parking lot, I couldn't believe how historical and beautiful the buildings looked. Red brick with white trim and fancy woodwork. It felt like we'd stepped back in time. Once inside, there were long, fancy hallways with marbled floors and tall columns with ornate walls. It was beautiful with rows of big chandeliers. We walked in towards the ticket counter into a room with wood benches and a tall counter. A pretty woman with a name tag that read Rona greeted us. Good morning and welcome to the Henry Ford Museum. How many will you how many of you will be visiting us today? Eight, please, replied Mr. Suarez. Have you been here before? asked Rona. No, we replied and shook our heads. Well, I think you'll be in for a real surprise. Most people are amazed by the treasury of history inside the museum. Some unbelievable things. What the friendly woman didn't realize was just how unbelievable some of the things we were about to encounter really were. See, I love this book. Almost every chapter you can end with dun-dun-dun.